Grace and peace, people of Rose Park. Thanks so much for joining us again as we continue in our study through the book of Genesis. Today, we're going to fast forward and we're going to jump to Genesis 15. And we're going to hear the beginnings of one of the most common rhythms that is played out through the rest of Scripture. That rhythm is the rhythm, rhythm of covenant. And we'll get to that. But we jump to Genesis 15. Now, since the last time we jumped in Scripture, which was Genesis 11, a lot has happened. Abram, not Abraham, not quite yet, Abram has been called by God. He and his nephew Lot have been separated. Lot has been held in captivity, and he's also been rescued. And now we jump into Genesis 15. Before we do, uh, make sure you have a, a journal with you, your Bible open, your phone on silence. If you're listening to this while you're walking, I'd encourage you to uh, be open to uh, the Spirit's presence, not only next to you, but also in you. Uh, opening your eyes, opening your ears, to all the things that God desires for us to see, hear, and experience. Would you quiet your hearts and pray with me? God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, use this time that we have set apart to speak to us. Open our ears, for we are listening. Open our hearts, for we are anticipating the movement of your Spirit. Put away all distractions, and may this word bring us one step closer to you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Hear now a word of the Lord from Genesis chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O oh Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. The Lord brought Abram outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O oh Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? The Lord said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other, but he did not cut the birds in two. And when birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. Then the Lord said to Abram, Know this for certain, that your offspring shall be aliens in a land that is not theirs, and shall be slaves there, and they shall be oppressed for four hundred years. But I will bring judgment on the nation that they serve, and afterward they shall come out with great possessions." As for yourself, you shall go to your ancestors in peace. You shall be buried in a good old age, and they shall come back here in the fourth generation, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. When the sun had gone down, and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, the land of the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Rephaim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
in this chapter of Scripture, we hear the beginnings of a biblical rhythm that is played out through the rest of Scripture, the rhythm of covenant making. We'll see in the rest of Genesis and into Exodus and into the entire narrative of Scripture that God establishes, gracefully and graciously establishes covenants with his people. And covenants are a biblical fancy word for promises. We, the church, continue this rhythm. We make covenants in marriage. We make covenants when we welcome a pastor to a church. We make covenants around the baptismal font. We make covenants when we join the church. We are a covenant-making people because we believe that covenants are important, that making promises and keeping your word is important. But as we'll see throughout the narrative of Scripture, we don't have the ability by ourselves to keep covenants because of our inherent sin. It just doesn't happen. And God knows this, and by grace, he continues to reestablish these covenants. We'll see play it out in the book of Genesis and Exodus, where the people break their covenant. They wander away from God foolishly. God then calls them back and graciously reestablishes the covenant with them. As you begin and continue your week, would you consider the covenants you have made in your life? The covenant with a spouse, perhaps. The covenant with your children, with your church. And more importantly, and most importantly, the covenant you have made with God. Thanks so much for joining us as we continue to study God's word. Grace and peace, and we hope to see you on Sunday.